Okay. 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 Um, what we would um, we would describe engagement as um, as purposeful dialogue, um, where um, just as Kevin was was saying there, it's about engaging the community uh, about the things that are important to them and developing um, relationships with them. So, for example, um, right now in Scotland we have a uh, where we're doing local pl community plans. So each community, uh, geographical community, is encouraged to produce their own local plans and within that it, it should identify what the priorities are important to them and that might be wraparound childcare, it might be uh, youth employment opportunities, it might be transportation uh, at rural communities, it might have different th uh, um, might have different ambitions from, say, our urban um, communities as well. So, so what we would describe um, community engagement is that, that purposeful dialogue, speaking to the community, uh, getting them involved and engaged, and actually, if possible, about you know existing services or things that they want for the future, and 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 actually having dialogue about that. Um, and as we know. Uh, in Scotland and, and I'm sure for you guys as well, the, the kind of fiscal purse is getting tighter and tighter and we're expecting our communities to do more and more and be part of the, the, the delivery mechanism. And actually that's not a bad thing for communities that most of them are up for that, but they, they want to be, they want to have equal dialogue and they want to, you know, be part of the, the discussions. Uh, you know, and the benefits from that is that um, the community gets services that are appropriate for them, that are designed by them, and you know are, are going to work in, in a way that, that that's that, that's good for them. It, it possibly will be, be developing more efficient services. It will get um, communities um, more into the kind of democratic participation because you know they've been involved in discussions that you know I don't know if you guys do participatory budgeting we're doing a lot of that in Scotland where we're engaging the community about we've got x amount of money to spend what are the priorities in the community that we should be spending that on and you know and, and listening to voices and being capable as community development and community engagement practitioners to actually have those conversations and not just listening to the loudest voices that are out there so there's lots there's lots that we do uh, in terms of community engagement, and uh, but it's always about that purposeful dialogue with the community and trying to get that higher relationship. Um, uh, if you think about Arnstein's ladder of participation, it's about going from, as Kevin had said there, not just a one way dialogue, this is what we're doing, but actually going from that, that to um, work with us and, and how we can how can we develop services that are important to you and how can you be involved in, in you know in, in a meaningful way and um, that's not exhausting as a volunteer but actually um, you know um, but, but you'll be able to see your ideas and your designs come through in terms of the services that we deliver or the new projects that we we establish so Hopefully that that puts us on the same kind of footing and by um, community uh, I'm, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about communities of place. I'm talking about communities of interest. I'm talking about faith communities. I'm talking about online communities. It depends on how people identify themselves as a community. As you guys will know, there are communities within communities, even when you identify young people uh, within that, that community of young people within a place, there are other communities, there are uh, communities within that as well. And that may well mean that you need to, to think about different methods of engagement. You know, if you're uh, if you want to work with a, a community as a whole, you wouldn't use the same methods of engagement that you would for older people. So you wouldn't have a public meeting and expect young people to come along and you know feel comfortable enough to have their say. You might get a youth worker to work with them and you know do do some um, proper engagement in that way. Um, I'm getting too old to try and even understand what young people do. Um, I'm trying to still get my head around my, my son's use of Snapchat. Uh, and then that scale workers and youth workers uh, are, are able to kind of engage young people and uh, doing that where where we have them. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that you guys are just like here in Scotland. We don't have enough youth, work, youth workers on uh, out there in the community. We don't have enough community development workers uh, out there doing, you know, doing um, good work and 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 we're starting to see the results of that. Um, hopefully, hopefully things will change, but we'll, we'll see. So um, two issues. What do we mean by community engagement? And secondly, um, 
uh, what do we mean by community? And it's that it, it can be about a geography, but equally it can be about um, communities of interest or, or whatever. And um, you know how a community defines itself is is important. So uh, those are kind of things that we'll be coming back to as as we uh, work our way um, through the tool. OK, um, I'm just. We are right. OK. Um, uh, forgive me if I'm not reading. Is it, uh, please don't forget to. Sorry, I'm going to switch off. All right, so OK, I, I, I can't see that. I, I'm not really looking at any text as, as I'm going through the tool. So um, one of the things and, and this will this will chime with you guys um, is that um, one of the things that, that, that prompted us to develop the national standards for community engagement or uh, good principles uh, for community engagement was that um, communities in 2004 in Scotland were go going to their elected representatives and saying um, at this time community engagement was very much a top down um, process. They were saying to uh, elected officials, they were saying um, that the community engagement that's happening right now is tokenistic. Um, the methods of engagement aren't appropriate for what they're trying to achieve. They just turn into to shouting matches and nobody's voice is getting heard. Less heard voices in our community are not being heard because um, because the, the the quality of the, the of the the work is is poor. Uh, staff are being sent out to engage with our communities without a, a proper plan or resources in order to make that happen. They've been told by their senior managers to go out and you know you've got three weeks to find out what the community in in, in Glasgow thinks about X, Y, or Z. Um, the, um, the communities were, 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 were saying that when they turned out on a wet Tuesday night for a, for a meeting to talk about um, you know, uh, what's happening in the community, they didn't hear any feedback about what decisions were taken as a result of that. Um, uh, the, um, the communication, the materials that were shared, maybe it's a more complex topic, were shared with the community, were too complex for the for most people in the community to be able to make head or tail. So maybe that might be um, uh, architects drawings of a particular community centre uh, not being put in a format that, that everybody can understand and, and you know properly comment and people not receiving information in a timely fashion so they can make sense of, of it and, and, and properly respond to those kind of things. So there was lots of issues um, around about community engagement and, and also um, Need the recognition that, uh, that community engagement is a real skill, uh, and 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 uh, the practitioners are not just the person who's who happens to be working on a particular project. There uh, there's real skill in terms of methods of engagement, in terms of planning out the process, in terms of the the confidence that you need when you're uh, how to deal with the loudest voices in the room, in terms of the knowledge that you need in order to think who are the less heard voices, how can we get those involved, in terms of the you know, being able to develop relationships in, in the community in order to, um, you know, uh, feel the, the trust from the community, because as, as you guys will know, many people talk about apathy in the community that, um, that they've been so scunnered, that's a good Scottish word for you, so scunnered by um, uh, the, the quality of the engagement and, and, not, and, and not seeing things change in their community that they actually uh, don't want to come out to the next meeting. They, they don't believe anything positive is going to come of it. And so it's a real battle um, to kind of overcome a lot of these hurdles. And in 2004, that's what we tried to do um, with the, the, the national standards for community engagement, uh, which we would call uh, good principles, good quality principles for community engagement. And, uh, you know, um, I see that you guys are, are nodding your heads with this because you, you're familiar with that. And when I spoke to colleagues in Australia and Canada, they're nodding their heads as well and saying that's exactly the same thing that we're experiencing as well. It's this, it's it's the bureaucracy meets um, citizens, and 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 I think um, it, it's it's not hasn't worked well um, until we actually are able to empower our communities and um, something that's happening here in Scotland to some extent. And, and Scotland is, is by no means ideal, even though this is in 2004 that we tried to invoke um, these good practice principles. We're still just making inroads into it and it's taken a long time. But I do think that the quality of community engagement has improved to, since 2004 because of, uh, to some extent, because of these principles, but also about 
uh, the, the, the increasing importance that um, the Scottish Government has put on engaging with communities and finding out what their views are and moving away from tokenistic um, uh, processes. And also that there is less top down now and, and there's more engagement happening within communities. So, for example, we've got community development trusts and we've got um, community councils, all of which are in communities and they're engaging almost in a horizontal way in terms of tr trying to find out what are the what do the communities think about transport links? What do the communities think about childcare? Um, and so we'll get, we're having a lot of engagement across the way and that that's happened in the last 10 to 15 years. So um, that's that's kind of where we are. Um, uh, I was going to talk about the policy context, but I'll come back to that if I think that's going to be important. But just to say on the left hand column there, you'll see in 2005 we launched the National Standards of Community Engagement, having spent two years speaking to practitioners up and down the length and breadth of the, the, the country from the borders to the to Orkney, um, uh, to speaking to um, and asking the simple question, what does good quality community engagement look like? Um, at that time, we had 10 national standards um, uh, of quality engagement. Um, and then in 2009, maybe four years after we launched the national standards, we asked the community uh, uh, workers, are, are you using the national standards? Um, are, are they helpful? And what they were saying was, yeah, they, they make sense. They look like they've been developed by community development workers. But if we're using them in practice, we can't say we're actually adhering to them, but we've got them in the back of our mind and we, we, they help us to plan and review. And we thought, well, that's not great. And if it's in the back of your mind, we'd, we'd probably like it to be at the fore uh, and be able to demonstrate that. So we developed the, the voice tool from there um, and then we reviewed it again in 2016 um, and where we got seven national standards. And essentially, um, the, the the policy context has kind of moved with that. Um, the the big, the most important one for us is the Community Empowerment Act in Scotland, where it gives citizens particular rights within communities. One is about um, asset transfers, where they're able to buy the local church for a pound that's not not been occupied for the last ten years. Um, other ones are about um, they can get involved. They get a right to to request to be involved in service design um, and you know, uh, and speak to local authorities about about that. Um, that's still in its infancy and, and st we're still looking at uh, how that's working in practice. But there's interesting things that are coming from the, the Empowerment Act um, uh, and, and that's that's followed, you know, from the Quality Qualities Act and the, the, the Christie Commission, which was basically just the message from the Christie Commission was we need to, in the future, we need to involve communities more more frequently and and more profoundly in service and redesign um, and so these were all um, all kind of um, uh, what do you call them uh, drivers for change in Scotland and so we've got what we do have is a Scottish government who's very keen to have the community's voice heard um, and so they're they're pushing agencies and local authorities and the NHS to you know, establish mechanisms for the community to be involved. Underlying all of that in Scotland are these national standards for community engagement. And the, these are the seven that were developed in 2016, really just kind of building on the 10 and pushing them together and uh, so that we've got um, these, um, these standards. We call them the standards. Uh, they'll be presented to you as principles for good community engagement, and we know that they're effective because we've been using them, um, you know, for for the last um, what is it, two thousand and and five, 